I'm excited about this drug because this is the first drug, Copenfi, which is a combination drug of xenolamine and trospium. And this combination is the first time in treating schizophrenia that we're not affecting the dopamine or the serotonergic systems. That's groundbreaking, and I'll tell you why. Because for the first time, you're not really getting weight gain. You're not getting tardive dyskinesia, which is the permanent tick of your fingers, face, body, you know, the, the repetitive movements you see people go like this, that's tardive dyskinesia. Or you're not getting akathisia, constantly need to move. These were disfiguring side effects of the older antipsychotics like Haldol, Respiradol, Abilify, Rexulti, Respiradol, uh, Caplita, Viralar. Remember all those drugs? I, I'm not saying they're bad drugs, but they cause that tardive dyskinesia because they involve the dopamine system, which is a muscular system. This is different. Cobenfi, which is xenolamine and trospium, affects the muscarinic system. <coughs> I'll get right into that. What does that mean? The muscarinic system. In this particular case, there's, I think, five. And it, what it does, it simulates the muscarinic one and four and blocks the five. And it blocks it throughout the body. And that's important. What does the muscarinic system do? It's the autonomic nervous system. In the Outside the brain, it's involved in intestinal movement, uterine movement, bladder movement, eye movement, blood vessel movement. These are all the areas where a smooth muscle. Striated muscles, when I move my hand, all the muscles involved in voluntary movement is striated muscle. There's also cardiac muscle that keeps your heart beating. That's an amazing muscle because it beats for your entire life, 60 to 100 times a minute. But let's get back to this. We're talking about the muscarinic system because we're talking about Cobenfi, which is a combination of xenolamine and trospium. It affects the muscarinic system. Acetylcholine. This is unique. The older drugs affect dopamine and all the side effects. Weight gain, drowsiness, tics, permanent disfiguring motor tics, restlessness. This new drug doesn't have it. That's a miracle. So what does it have? Well, we need to do a little history here. Xenolamine is an old drug. I remember in the 1990s, they were looking at using this in Alzheimer's or psychosis in Alzheimer's. Eli Lilly was. And they wanted to affect these muscarinic, the autonomic nervous system in your brain. And it, it had potential, but they had too many side effects. Because what it did was... Well, it is stimulating the acetylcholine muscle, which affects the muscular receptors in your brain. It also affected them in the periphery. So when I say the brain, I mean the brain and the spinal cord. Everything outside of that is called the periphery. So what happened is when you stimulate smooth muscle in the periphery, you get alterations in blood pressure, eye movements, vision, bladder problems, intestinal problems, you infect the entire vasculature, the uterine system, your, your uterus. So it didn't work. Diarrhea, uncontrolled urination, uncontrolled salvation because it controlled salvation. Uh, your bowels, abdominal pain, eye, inability to see correctly. So they left xenolamine alone because they couldn't control those peripheral side effects. But the side effects of the acetylcholine muscular receptors in your brain and your spinal cord were very helpful controlling psychosis. We call it positive symptoms of schizophrenia. Hallucinations, auditory, visual, disorganized speech and behavior. That's part of schizophrenia that it was controlling. But it was intolerable because it stimulated smooth muscle by stimulating the parasympathetic, the cholinergic, smooth muscle system modulated by the muscarinic receptors in the periphery, outside of the central nervous system. Well, this other company, I think it's called Kuna, in like 2004 said, you know, we can control this. 
with this periphery, with these outside of the nervous system side effects with a drug called Trospium. Trospium is another old drug. It's been around since 2004, and it was used for overactive bladder when people couldn't control peeing. So I used it for patients for that reason. Well, they were saying, we're going to block acetylcholine's effect in the periphery by using this cholinergic blocker drug, Trospium. Great. It worked. So now they were able to block the peripheral side effects of zenolamine and allow for its cholinergic side effects in the central nervous system, the brain, and the spinal cord, to then exert its effect on the central nervous system by helping the central nervous system control hallucinations, delusions, disorganized speech, and behavior. So that was key. And that's why we have the mixture of the two drugs. One stimulates these cholinergic receptors in the brain, and the other controls the periphery, the smooth muscle side effects modulated by the cholinergic system, acetylcholine, outside of the central nervous system. Trospium, great combo. And I think this is a, a, a great way to handle things. It seems like it's going to work. How is this drug given? The, the zenolamine lasts about five hours. The trospium lasts about six hours. So they divided the dose into twice a day in extended release tablets. Makes sense. You take it with a high fat meal. Avocado, bacon, I guess, fatty meats. So you take it twice a day. They're recommending 50 milligrams of zenolamine for the first two days, 20 milligrams of trospium for the first two days, then increase to 100 milligrams of zenolamine for the next five days and 20 milligrams of um, trospium for five days, and then increase to 125 of zenolamine for thereafter in the morning and 125 of zenolamine at night with 30 milligrams of trospium. The max dose would be 250 milligrams of zenolamine. So here we have, I think it's groundbreaking because the first time we've gotten away from the old dopamine serotonergic drugs and all their tics and weight gain and sexual dysfunction and disfiguring side effects. They're great drugs and I, I know they controlled the what's called the pan scale, positive and negative uh, symptom subscale of schizophrenia. So now we have this new compound that doesn't have all those negative side effects. And, and the studies came out, it's equal in efficacy to the, the older drugs. So I'm very positive on this drug if it can be tolerated. And it appears the combination allows for it to be tolerated. It looks like a good mixture. Its efficacy is there. It started controlling symptoms of schizophrenia the first week, and uh, pretty much by the second week they were under control. It sounds pretty good. I think we'll see how this works out in an older population. But so far, so good. It's been out since September of 2024. I haven't heard anything negative so far. It's slow to be adapted. I'm not sure why. But we'll see. Um, I'm curious to see what people say in the comments. Thank you.